lie from Liverpool, the dark paranormal season nine. Hi everyone and welcome back to The Dark Paranormal Season 9. I hope all your festive plans are going well and you're looking forward to a Christmas break. And if you don't get a Christmas break, don't worry. We'll keep those true paranormal experiences coming to keep you company. In today's true paranormal experience, we're going to hear from Gabby and she sent us in a litany of her paranormal experiences throughout her life. And believe me, some of them may replay on your mind when you go to bed tonight. As you know, we like to try and build up our episodes as we reach towards the end of a season. And episode 8 next week is possibly one of the strangest stories I think I've ever heard. Then of course, we will have episodes 9 and 10. And like in previous seasons, they will be a double header. So although we are coming towards the end of Season 9, I can guarantee you we're going to go out with a bang. And let me just say, we have some surprises in store for Season 10. But before we hear today's true paranormal experience from Gabby, we need to of course say a big thank you to our Patreons. When you sign up to Patreon, not only do you receive these episodes both ad-free and before anyone else... You can also receive access to our Patreon-only podcast, Dark Bites. Dark Bites is a show which runs every week of the year, even during the downtime between seasons, meaning you never miss that paranormal fix. We've built a wonderful community of like-minded paranormal enthusiasts over at Patreon, and we'd like to extend an exclusive invitation just for you. Simply head over to patreon.com forward slash the dark paranormal just like these wonderful new team members have Rianne Edwards, Kenneth T, Evan Trollton, Brittany Hilligas, Mandy Chu, Tristan Brooke, Arlene Diaz, Brittany Ross, Deanna, Zoe Phillips, Roland Loif, Lindsay Gray, Inan Nachtman, Miranda Westerfer, Lindsay Carter, Chantal Rusin, GK Blacksmithing, Josh Prescott, Brittany Johnson, Seri McCormick, Michelle Bailey, Jason Travis, Samantha Davis, Zoe, Julia Rowe, Bob Egan, Hannah Beth, Jennifer Ewing, Sarah and Mandy D. Thank you so much, guys, for the support, and I hope you enjoy all the extra episodes over there on Dark Bites, and of course, the early ad free releases of these episodes. So, if you'd like to become a team member, head over to patreon.com forward slash the dark paranormal. But right now, it's that time. So, please, lower the lights, make yourself comfortable, and of course, leave your disbelief at the door as we hear all about the evil that follows. After binging the dark paranormal and listening to all of these amazing and terrifying stories, I found myself wondering if I should also share both mine and my family's paranormal experiences throughout the years. I'm not living in my home country at the moment, so all the stories I'll mention or at least the most shocking to me and my family, took place back in my homeland. I think it all started with my mum. She's a very sweet woman, but also very shrewd. And she's also perceptive when it comes to people's feelings and also the paranormal. My grandparents bought a little wooden house in the city, way back when there were still trees and cattle roaming around. And, over time, they began working hard to remodel it. The house was big, yet all the rooms were in weird places. Even the kitchen was on the third floor. I never knew the reason and I don't really care. Sadly, my grandparents are no longer with us to tell me. I always used to feel uneasy when I was there, but at the same time, there were some safe places where I enjoyed playing with my cousins when I was little. I guess at the time my grandparents and their children moved there, my mum must have been around five or six years old. I must mention my grandma seemed not to love my mum, 
or at the very least, loved her in a weird, non-obvious way, ever since she was little. This is very important to the story. Mum was playing with some wooden toys with her friend on the landing of the stairs, and they were both immersed in their game. When my mum started to feel uneasy and felt the need to look upstairs, of course she was curious and look she did. Big mistake. There was a lady on the hallway, dressed in what seemed like an old-fashioned blue and white dress. She was gesturing with her hands for my mum to come closer to her. Somehow my mum knew this lady wasn't supposed to be there, and she shrieked in horror. Somehow she could also tell the woman in blue was also scared, as she started to run towards the end of the hall where the shower was. When my mum and her friend built up enough courage to check the area, the lady had vanished. Later that afternoon, my mum had a fever due to the shock. At first, my grandma didn't believe her, but some days later she was cleaning her room and grandma found a picture of an old friend, someone who had passed away some years prior, and she realised it was the same lady my mum had described to her. And no, my mum hadn't seen that picture before, in case you were wondering. My mum and dad divorced, and then she met my stepdad, whom I call and consider my father. We also had to move back to my grandma's house. In fact, we had to move homes and cities several times because of my stepdad's job at the time. It required him to travel a lot. This time, nothing of relevance paranormal-wise happened. Also, Mum thought the spooky things only happened back at Grandma's. She was soon to be proved wrong. One day, she'd just woken up and was ready to prepare breakfast for my stepdad, when he noticed that she had something that looked like a burn on her chest. He asked her if she was okay and if he could see what it was. When she lifted her shirt, he could see a red handprint. He asked her to put hers on it to measure it and make sure she didn't hurt herself while sleeping. But the hand was way too big to be my mum's. She had small and delicate hands. Then my stepdad tried with his hand and it was even bigger than his. So they were left wondering what the hell that was. Some years later, I think it was 1999 or the early 2000s, we moved to a little town which I still call my favourite place to live. It was a house with three bedrooms, a kitchen, dining room, living room, an exposed attic where I used to keep all my toys and play every afternoon, and a huge orchid where you could find every fruit imaginable. But before that, my older sister and I had to stay at my grandma's, because we needed to finish school. One night we were sleeping in my uncle's room, on the same bed. I was starting to doze off when I felt as if someone was rocking the bed. I turned round to ask my sister if she was okay, when I noticed she was about to ask the same thing. We both felt it, but we made nothing of it. Months later, we moved to the little town with my mum and my stepdad. One night in bed, I was staring out of the window at the sky and turned around to sleep when I saw three lights moving inside my room. There was no obvious internal source for these lights. Also, there was no way someone from outside was using flashlights or anything of that sort and these lights were moving in a very odd, almost sentient way. I was so scared I screamed at the top of my lungs until my parents got there. I told them exactly what happened and they immediately went outside to see if there was someone out there, but no one was. And after that experience, 
My stepdad suggested my sister and I joined our twin beds together and sleep even closer to each other. I guess one or two years later, Mum would have yet another experience in that same house. My baby brother had just fallen asleep, and my mum and dad were watching a movie. They've always been night owls, and would be up very late most nights, no matter how early they had to be up to go to work, or to send us to school. Mum had just come back from the kitchen to get some water. She left her room door ajar, and continued watching the movie with Dad. That's when she saw a figure outside the door. It was a little girl, dressed in a white gown. She had a bowl-cut hairdo, just as my older sister and I did. She was staring at my mum, and even my dad saw her. Mum started calling out our names, my older sister's name, mine, and my little sister's name, but got no response. In the end, they thought it was me, because I did used to sleepwalk, and they tried to talk me back to my senses. Mum stood up towards the me figure, and as she did, the little girl turned around and walked through the closed bathroom door. Mum thought she was seeing things and opened the door quickly to see if I was in there, but the bathroom was empty. Months later, during Christmas, Mum asked my stepdad to take us to a visit to our family. Mum wanted to visit Grandma and the sister she got along with most at that time, though years later she would turn rather abusive towards my mother. And we also wanted to see my blood father, he wanted to see my older sister and I, and so he asked us to stay with him for a couple of days before we got back to town. My aunt asked my mum to stay at her house for Christmas and New Year, and even had us stay in my cousin's room. After I spent some days with my father, I got back to my aunt's house to stay, but I didn't like being there. I always had that same feeling of being watched, like I did when I was at Grandma's. One night, my mum, my stepdad, my two siblings and I stayed in the same room while my older sister stayed with my cousin in another room. Mum was breastfeeding my baby brother on one mattress and my stepdad, my sister and I were on another. He was talking to my mum and saying their good nights when they turned off the lights and started to doze off. Mum was laying my baby brother down when she started to feel like someone was creeping under the covers. She thought it was my stepdad who wanted some romance whilst we all slept. So she shrugged it off and even giggled. What she thought was romance quickly turned out to be pure horror. It wasn't my stepdad. A dark, tall, human-like figure climbed up and over her, pinned her down and covered her mouth. Mum was terrified and struggled to get free from whatever was pinning her down, but it was too strong. My stepdad somehow saw what was happening and rushed to turn on the lights, but there was nothing but my mum crying of fear and my baby brother, who thankfully didn't wake up to that scene. He opened the door to see if there was someone outside in the hall, but it was like 4am and everyone was sleeping. He closed the door behind him and started to comfort my mum when all of a sudden the doorknob started rattling and the door started shaking. My stepdad isn't scared of anything, but this got to him. He just closed that door. He jumped up and flew open the door but it was just the black, empty corridor. Some years later, we had to reluctantly move back to Grandma's for economic reasons. My dad went to work in another country, so we were left alone for a year. Remember when I mentioned it seemed my grandma didn't love my mum? Well, we suffered a lot for it. 
Grandma had turned all my aunts and uncles against us, so we suffered a lot of abuse. But we couldn't do much because we had nowhere else to go. Now, I'm not a very religious or spiritual person, though I do believe there's a God that watches over us, and I do believe that our feelings are intertwined with paranormal experiences. And I think all that abuse that we suffered was like food to the house, and whatever evil was there. I remember very clearly when 9-11 happened. Not because we lived in the US, because we didn't. But because my mum had a premonition about the tragedy. Two days prior, mum woke up very early in the morning after a horrible nightmare. She told my grandma about how she was on a plane and it crashed against a building and caused a huge fire and how she felt herself burning in flames. Two days later, she and my grandma were watching the news. My mum just muttered to my grandma, Mum? And her response was, I know, you've already told me. Later that day, my mum was telling us about her premonition and about the news still in shock. One night we were having dinner in my mum's room because we didn't have a dining room and my little sister had to do the dishes. But as I mentioned before, we weren't allowed to use electricity, especially at night. So my sister went upstairs where the kitchen was to do the dishes in the dark. That night, my sister asked my brother to keep her company. We all felt uneasy around the house, so he waited for her on the stairs while she did the dishes. She was minding her own business when she felt a hand lay with force on her shoulder and a voice that told her, Hurry up! She thought it was my brother trying to hurry her up and turn to hit him, but when she turned around, there was no one there, and that my brother was doing whatever he was doing on the stairs. She started crying and shaking uncontrollably until my mum went to get her. Many other things happened during all the years we spent there. For example, on occasion, we would hear old music playing in the background, or the beds would start shaking at night, or we would get that feeling that someone was watching us, even though there was no one there. Things would move by themselves, and then there were the dark and tall shadows that I would see going through the doors. Once, the stereo even turned itself on, even though it wasn't plugged in. Eventually, my grandma passed away. She was diabetic and was in a bad state, no thanks to my aunts and uncles. Mum took her to the hospital and took care of her until her last breath. I must mention Grandma's dislike towards my mother was so strong she didn't even want her to be at her deathbed. Oh, the irony. But I won't deny that she had some good days and I learned many things from her, especially about food. That woman loved her kitchen and this is important to the story. A week or two after she died, my aunts and us were sharing a meal we bought together. Weird after all the abuse, I know, but my mum has a big heart. I remember we bought drinks and didn't buy plastic cups, so they asked me to go upstairs to get some glasses. I was minding my own business and thinking of whatever, anything except grandma. I got the glasses from the kitchen, but stopped to check the time on my phone. I was 18 or something at the time. When I heard very clearly, Gabrielletta, in a very sweet voice. And it wasn't just any voice. It was grandma's. It was how she used to call me when she was in a good mood, or when she wanted to show me something, or ask something from me. It was how she called me, on her deathbed. I felt chills go down my spine. As anyone would, I looked around to see if someone was there. 
I didn't want everyone to think I was going crazy. But, as I expected, I was all alone. Grandma's and Grandpa's rooms were now used as storage rooms. And I remember always feeling dread and uneasiness every time I was near my grandma's old room. It felt as if someone was watching me from inside the room and could reach out and grab or touch me at any moment. That room was always dark and cold, no matter how many lights were on or how hot it was outside. More than ten years after living at Grandma's, we were finally able to afford our own house. I remember the moment I walked out of that place. I said I would never go back. And I didn't go back until years later when my grandpa fell ill and we had to take turns taking care of him or taking him to hospital. After he died, one of my aunts reconciled with my mother and asked us for forgiveness for all the bad things that she'd done to us. I lived in this new house for more than 10 years as well, before we sold it to move to Europe. Remember the saying, never say never, and what I said about Grandma's love for her kitchen? Well, my family and I made the decision to sell our house so we could make that move to Europe with my stepdad. So we had to move back to my Grandma's old house in the meantime. It was 2017 during our short stay there, and my sister loves cooking and cleaning as much as Grandma did. So, one afternoon, she's preparing some snacks for us to enjoy, and she was alone in the kitchen. The fridge they had there was very old, and sometimes the door would just swing open by itself. So, one of our aunts who lived there made sure to use a wooden stick to keep the door closed. Please don't ask me why they didn't just buy a new one or fix it, Wooden sticks are third world country technology for you, I guess. If you know, you know. Anyway, after preparing the snacks, she would proceed to tidy up the kitchen and the old fridge. She made sure to place the wooden stick and go on with whatever she was cleaning. And that's when the fridge's door opened by itself. And spinning round to see, she noticed the wooden stick was nowhere to be seen. And it wasn't that the stick had just fallen on the floor or anything. It had disappeared. My sister would look for it everywhere. On the floor, under the furniture, under the fridge itself, inside the fridge, even outside the kitchen. But nothing. She was about to give up and look for another thing to keep the fridge closed when the wooden stick appeared literally out of thin air. It fell from the ceiling and hit her on the head. After that, she didn't like to be alone in that kitchen. The next thing happened to me. Now, I'm a night owl, and when I don't have work the next day, or nothing important to do, I stay up until the wee hours in the morning, and wake up very late in the afternoon. One day I woke up at 1pm. I don't remember why but I asked my aunt why she didn't wake me up, because it seemed like she needed some help around the house. But she told me my siblings helped her, and they told her not to wake me up, because I was having a rough time in my relationship with my fiancé at the time. And also I found out I might have breast cancer. Thankfully, that turned out to be okay. She told me she had some homemade bread for me in the kitchen, and I could use whatever I wanted to spread on it butter, cheese, etc. I opted for butter, which was stored in the Tupperware. I opened it when I heard my phone ringing. I didn't have my phone with me, so I ran for the stairs on the top floor to get it. When I remembered leaving the butter Tupperware open and saying to myself, oh shit, now flies will get in there. But then I realised I'd only be a few seconds taking this call, so it shouldn't be a problem. I picked up the phone and it was my ex fiance We were supposed to go out that day and he was asking what time I would be ready. While I was talking to him, I decided to go back to the kitchen to make sure to close the Tupperware lid. When I found everything tidied up, cleaned up 
and put away. I froze in fear. I was really scared. No one was around. My aunt, cousins and siblings were all downstairs with my mum. And now, just like my older sister, I couldn't be alone in this room anymore. In August 2017, we moved to Europe. My stepdad and brother welcomed us, and we initially lived in a duplex. Unfortunately, two years later, we were forced to move out and look for a house outside the city. It was way cheaper, bigger, and my siblings could share expenses with our parents. They were really happy to have us there too, and in case you're wondering, my siblings and I, except for my older sister, all have long-distance relationships. We're all engaged and are planning to marry and move out sooner or later. Anyway, we were so used to eating in our rooms whilst living at grandma's that even now we still do it. I don't remember what exactly was the reason, but we all ate together one night. And you know, my sisters and I have a thing where we take turns doing the dishes or cooking. So that night it was my turn to do the dishes and everyone went upstairs. Mum and stepdad were watching TV in their room. My older sister was in her room with my niece and my two siblings were playing video games in my brother's room. So I was left alone downstairs in the kitchen. As I was finishing, I started tidying up the dining table and was planning to go upstairs to my room and relax after a long day. That's when I heard my mum's voice calling for me. Gabby, I'm coming, I said. I was really annoyed because I was tired and just wanted to relax. When I heard again, Gabby, I said I'm coming, didn't you hear me? I'm finishing up here. But it seemed she didn't hear me. Gabby, once again, even louder. This time I gave up and went upstairs to see what my mum needed so urgently. That's when I found her laughing at some TV show next to my stepdad. Did you call me? I said. Mum looked puzzled and said, No, I didn't. Why? I froze and Mum noticed something was up, so she asked, Are you okay? Did something happen? Yes, Mum. I heard you were shouting for me. I heard it clearly. Are you sure you're not joking around, Mum? Mum looked at me sternly and said, You know I'd never joke like that after all we've been through. I knew I could trust her. She wasn't someone who'd make scary jokes, or someone who wouldn't believe me when I was scared of something. She herself went through all that. We lived there for two more years before we had to move back to the city. During that time, we would spend time packing up stuff and throwing things out we didn't need. And that's when the last paranormal activity happened to me once again. I'd just woken up. I went downstairs on the second floor where my mum's room was. But she was outside her room on the stairs, talking to my sisters. The eldest was sitting next to her, and the youngest was downstairs sitting on a couch in the living room but was still part of the chat they were having. I greeted them good morning and was about to go to the kitchen to look for something to eat when I heard my little sister's voice. She was teasing me for waking up late and whatnot. Then I heard something like a paper or a bag crumpling up. I thought it was my little sister downstairs eating some delicious snack, so I started teasing her and asking her to give me some. I must say I was still on the second floor with my mum and older sister, so I was just guessing it was my little sister eating something. When I started to walk downstairs towards her, I heard a very loud and clear, No! And thinking it was her, I was even more eager to see what delicious snack she was eating. Then I heard once again, No! This time, even Mum heard it. So we looked at each other, wondering why my sister was so adamant I didn't go downstairs. No! One last time. But I was already halfway downstairs, 
and looking at my little sister's puzzled face. We were all confused because that voice came out of nowhere. At first it sounded like my sister, but then it sounded deeper and more like a manly voice. Also, that day my stepdad and brother weren't home, so it couldn't have been them. That was the last time we experienced something like that. We're now living in the city, and every noise we hear, I can at least blame on our neighbours, as we live in an apartment building. But I'm still shaking with fear as I write this series of paranormal activity that happened to us. And I really hope these are the only stories I ever have to share. And as for whatever evil thing that lived and chased us around everywhere, I really hope it goes and stays where it belongs. Thank you so much for taking the time to read my story, and thank you for creating a safe space for people like us who have experienced such terrifying things. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Gabby And those very same sentiments right back to you and your family, Gabby. Thank you very much. Wow. There are so many topics covered in Gabby's true paranormal experience there. We have everything from shadow men to poltergeist activity to one phenomena which is rearing its head more often than not these days, that of the mimic. And if the experiences are to be believed, anytime you hear a spirit replicating someone you love, there are never good intentions attached. Well, Gabby, you leave us by saying you hope it's the only paranormal tales you ever have to write. But if that changes, please send them on in. And that goes to all of our listeners. If you're sitting on a true paranormal experience, please send them in to the Dark Paranormal at hotmail.com. And so that brings us to the end of episode 7. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram by searching for The Dark Paranormal. And we also have a YouTube channel, search for at The Dark Paranormal. For our Patreons, I'll of course speak to you on Sunday for another episode of Dark Bites. And for everyone, I'll see you here next week for episode 8. If you celebrate the festive season, I sincerely hope you have a lovely Christmas. And if not, don't forget, we'll be here to keep you company. Until then, remember, when you're discussing the paranormal, always try and leave some of your disbelief at the door. And I'll see you next week, here on The Dark Paranormal. <laughs>